student at Washington State University. Um, we hope everyone is safe and healthy at home and enjoying their online classes. So I'd like to talk a little bit about this piece of equipment. We have these standpipes here that we call manometers. I'm sure you all know what a manometer is. And so when we turn this on and water starts flowing through it, um, the height in these standpipes is going to be correlated to the pressure at that point in the pipe. And so um, we have here a beaker filled with colored water. Um, we have a pump in here. It's going to pump our water um, through the pipe from the inlet here to the outlet here. Um, if you haven't taken the pretest quiz on Qualtrics, uh, please follow the link below on your screen and go do that before um, you continue with the rest of this video. Start today um, with our valve fully open and so our fluid flow is going to be at the highest possible rate. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the pump and what I want you to do is I want you to watch the height of the standpipes once the fluid starts flowing. Um, to see how the pressure trend through the pipe looks with fully open flow. And so here we have our water starting to flow. Um, you'll notice that there's bubbles in the standpipe. And so to get an accurate measure of the height in the standpipe and therefore the pressure in the pipe, I'm gonna try to squeeze the tube to remove these bubbles from the pipe. And so what you should see right now is that at the entrance of our pipe over here, standpipe one, we have the highest standpipe height and therefore we have the highest pressure in the pipe at that point. And as we move along the pipe, we see that the pressure starts to decrease um, until we reach the end of our pipe where the pressure is lowest. And so I want you guys to think about um, what this pressure trend looks like and why. All right, so as we observe um, the pressure trend in this pipe, um, if your professor is having you fill out the um, LCDLM worksheet for this module, um, you can go ahead and go to page two and you can draw what you see on this pressure versus distance graph on the top of the page. So we want to start to understand the velocity trends in this pipe as well. And so we have to remember the principle of mass conservation and continuity when we're thinking about a straight pipe with no diameter changes. And so what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to slow the flow in the pipe by closing the valve so that our flow rate's very slow. What you should hopefully be able to see here um, is bubbles moving through the pipe in slow motion. And so we want you to be able to observe that as the bubbles flow from the beginning to the end of the pipe, even though there's a pressure distance, the velocity of the bubbles stays constant. And that means the velocity of the fluid is also constant as well in the pipe. And so the next thing I'd like you to do if you're doing the worksheet is to fill out this velocity versus distance graph also on page two for the velocity trend that you see through this pipe. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the valve back to fully open to our highest flow rate. And we're gonna start collecting some data for the height of the water in each of the standpipes as well as the flow rate going through the pipe. What we need for this is we need a second beaker and a stopwatch. We're gonna measure the volume that's gone through the pipe in a timed period of time. And then we're going to mark on this, these standpipes, the height of each, the water in each. And then we're going to measure that with a ruler. All right, so I've reset up this DLM so that instead of having a recycle loop of fluid, we now have the exit of our DLM um, in a separate beaker so that we'll be able to measure the volume um, when we're done with this trial. Uh, the valve is fully open right now. And so there's a space if you're doing the worksheet um, to put your data in this table on page three for the time, um, the volume, and the heights in the first and last standpipe. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the pump on now, and as soon as the fluid hits the beaker, I'm gonna start the stopwatch on my phone. All right, here we go. All right, so while this is running, um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the heights of the water in these standpipes so that we can measure them later. And we're gonna let this run until our inlet beaker is almost empty. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop the pump and stop the stopwatch on my phone. All right, so our time here is 23.52 seconds for the fully open valve setting. Um, next, we're gonna measure the volume in the beaker. Um, and it looks like we've got 625 milliliters of fluid here. And so you can use the time and the volume to calculate the volumetric flow rate um, 
do the pipe. And so next we're going to go ahead and measure the heights in standpipe one and standpipe four. Um, and it looks like standpipe one, we have a height of 9.5 centimeters. And in standpipe four, we have a height of five centimeters. All right, so next we're going to partially close our valve so we can slow down the flow rate. Um, and we're going to collect data for the second position on your table if you're doing the worksheet, um, partially closed position number one. And so we're going to do the same thing that we just did. All right, so again, I'm going to mark the height of the stand pipes. And we're going to let it run until our inlet beaker is empty. So our time for this trial was 26.33 seconds. Um, the volume in our outlet beaker is 575 milliliters. The height in standpipe one is 7.6 centimeters. And the height in standpipe four is centimeters. All right, so we're going to do this one final time uh, so that you can fill out row three of the data table on your worksheet, partially closed position two. I've closed the valve even more so that our flow rate is even slower than our last trial. Um, so here we go. I'm going to turn the pump on. This trial was 28.94 seconds. The volume in our outlet beaker this time is 550 milliliters. The height in standpipe one is 3.7 centimeters. And the height in standpoint standpipe four is 1.4 centimeters. So we'd also like to show you today um, how gravity affects the velocity through a straight pipe. Um, some of you might think that if the fluid's flowing downhill in a pipe, it starts to speed up, uh, but you should think about the principle of mass conservation and continuity, and hopefully um, this will help you understand what actually happens to the velocity of the pipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt our DLM so that the inlet is higher than the outlet. Um, again, you should be able to see bubbles going through the pipe here. And you should see that the bubbles from the inlet to the outlet are remaining at a constant speed. And so that means that even though we have gravity um, working through the pipe, the velocity doesn't change because the diameter of the pipe remains constant. So this concludes um, our work today with the Hydraulic Loss Desktop Learning Module. Um, your instructor should give you um, directions on how much of this worksheet you need to complete. Um, any additional activities that they want you to do, um, one to take the post-test on Qualtrics. I hope you all have enjoyed this demonstration today. Mm -hmm.